Now we're getting into the more challenging part of the class, and today we're focusing on the APA citations, that is, inside your text. When you're writing your research, what do you put inside there to make your citation to show where did you get the information from? So let's begin with the most straightforward, the most often used one of these issues, which is when you actually quote from something you've read. That's called a direct quote. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our citation inside of a parenthetical. Parenthetical, check out that word there, parenthetical text. That means inside parentheses. Inside parentheses. That means that we're going to be writing our research sentence and then we're going to have a parentheses open and a parentheses closed. Please remember, before parentheses, you must have one space. Please remember the space, right? And after the parentheses, you must also have one space. And there's no space at the beginning, no space at the end inside the parentheses. We're going to look at some examples in a second to see that, but keep that in mind. So here's an example of how that looks like. Get rid of these. Jones, 2015, comma, E for page, period, space, 152, wrote, No factor is more important, although not all researchers support this. So here we need to first see we have a quotation, don't we? A quotation, a direct quote. That means we took this from a book, from a journal article, from somewhere. This is exactly what someone wrote. Where did we get it from? We got it from the author is Jones. So this is the author's last name, family name. This is the parenthetical. Open parentheses, close parentheses. And then inside here, we're going to follow the APA style guide, which is we need to have the year, then a comma. And if this is a direct quote, it must be on a page, on a specific page. So we're going to put P for one page. If it was more than one page, it would be PP, two P's together. And we have the page number, which is 152. So this is just a little example to get us going. Here's another little example. Perception is key to consumer satisfaction. What's the difference between these two examples? Obviously, they're not the same. The difference is very straightforward. One is a direct quote. And one is not a direct quote. It's more what we call a paraphrase. That is, it's about what they said, but not exactly what they said. If you use quotation marks, it must be exactly, open quotation, close quotation, exactly what they say. If it's not exactly what they say, you cannot use quotation marks. Even if it's one word different, you cannot use quotation marks. Quotation marks must be exactly the same. In any case, you still must have a citation. You still must tell the reader, where did this come from? And so we're going to have to have that parenthetical inside of there. In this one, it's much simpler, right? Because we're just going to say, yeah, this is kind of the idea that came from this person. And who was this person? This person is the author Smith. And we have a comma. And then the year of the publication is from is 2012. So again, this is the APA rule. We will look at more closely. Let's go ahead and start looking at some of the basics of this. The first thing we need to pay attention to is the name because this is confusing. There are many different ways to write names across the world. And the APA style, of course, was made for Western or European American names. And here's an example. So we have Clyde A. Warden Jr. That's me. This is very straightforward. It would seem very easy to understand. But for many non-native speakers, such as Chinese, Japanese, 
and um, Indonesia, Malaysia. There are many ways to write names that are not at all uh, this way. So we need to understand how does this work. The idea is that we have the family name here. And this name is the name that we're going to cite. These other names are the given name. This is the first name. This is the middle name, A. And then this is a suffix. That is, it comes after words, some kind of suffix. This is not a title like doctor or professor or a lawyer or something like that or MD, medical doctor. No, no. This is part of the actual person's name. So when we are citing a person, we're going to pay attention to the family name or the last name. And in fact, this is the name that we're going to use to order our names. That is alphabetical order A to Z based on this W, not based on this C. So the reason we do this is because we're going to order our list later. Year of publication is the next key point we need to remember. So here's Kessler. So this is the author's family name. And here is the year of publication. Kessler found that among epidemiological samples, something 2003. Early onset results in a more persistent and severe course, Kessler 2003. So again, these are two ways to write this. Both of these ways have parenthetical, that is a parenthesis. Back here a little bit. Whoops, whoops, let me show that to you again. Here we have the parentheses just for the date. And in the second example, we have the parentheses for the name and the date. Both ways are possible. Both are parenthetical, that is, they both use parentheses. Sometimes you can get away without using a, par a parenthesis at all, and this is a very rare kind of case. Um, why is it rare? Because it's kind of hard to write this way, actually. It's much easier to just write the ideas and then include a parenthesis open, parenthesis close, include the author and the date. That is really the easiest way to write your sentences. A harder way to write your sentences would be, in this case, in 2003, which right there is the year, comma, Kessler, who's that? That's the author. His study of this did something. Wow, well, that's interesting because here's the idea I'm actually writing about, but here's the person and here's the date. That's everything we need. We don't need anything more in parentheses because we've already included it. That's a rare case. And I don't think you'll do that very much because it's actually very hard to write that way, especially when you have many references, which you should have for your good quality research. Within text of the same paragraph, so we're inside one paragraph, and then we're going to write a reference again. It's kind of like repeating the same reference. What do you do? Let's take a look at an example here with Kessler. So here we have a paragraph. In fact, it's a single long, oh no, it's two sentences, right? Two sentences in this paragraph. So an epidemiological samples, among epidemiological samples, sorry, I'm not good at saying that word, Kessler. 2003. So here's our first citation. This citation tells us what? It tells us the person's name and the date. Found that early onset social anxiety disorder results in a more potent and severe course. End of sentence. Now we're going to begin another sentence. Kessler also found issues with social integration and depression. So here we have a really great example of the same paper. This is the same research paper, Kessler 2003, used twice inside the same paragraph. APA style tells us that if you use the same paper, the same citation, twice in the same paragraph, you do not need to include the date the second time. 
That, of course, is a special rule you must remember inside the same paragraph. Actually, it's pretty common because when you write a paragraph, you mention, in this case, Kessler, and then Kessler said, and then Kessler said something more, and Kessler did something more. So it's actually very common, and this saves you a lot of trouble. You do not need to repeat that date. Another paragraph, the second paragraph, third paragraph, however, is different. You need to have the date again. You cannot skip it at that time. This is inside the same paragraph. If the repeat is in the same paragraph, however, the first occurrence was inside the parentheses, then you do need to include the date. So let's look at that a little bit carefully, hard to understand. Here we have the first time we use the Kessler citation here. The study also showed that there was a high rate of comorbid comorbidity with alcohol abuse or dependence and major depression, Kessler 2003, in the same study, here I'm gonna cite Kessler again, the same paper, but because the first time was inside the parentheses, the whole name, the name, not just the date, the name, now I'm using the name here, I must include the date. Even if I included the name inside the parentheses, such as here, Kessler, I would also still need the date of 2000, Three, because this first time was inside the parentheses. Very confusing. This is a great example of the complexity of the APA rule. They don't give you a rule of thumb or a guideline like MLA does, but they're very, very specific about things like this. If you're using software like EndNote or Zotero, they probably will try to do this for you. But again, you've gotta be really careful. I find that this kind of rule often does not work inside that automatic software. And in fact, can scramble or mix up my paper in general. So you need to really be careful. Again, very quickly, if you have the same paper cited twice, and the first time the name of the author is outside the parentheses, then the next time, you do not need a date. However, if the first time is inside the parentheses, the second time you do need a date again. You need to repeat that. If it's inside or outside parentheses, it doesn't matter the second time. 